I feel something happening in this church. If y'all would just get out of your comfort zone and tear the club up. If you would just get out of your comfort zone. All right, you saw Pastor Osteen. He's here, but the King of Glory is in the room. And now that he is here, what are you going to do about it? I feel glory in the room. I said I feel glory in the room. I said I, I, I said I, I said I feel glory in the room. And I'm not gonna wait until the battle is over. Ah, I'm a shout right now. Give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, weeping me endure for a night. But joy, joy. comes in the morning y'all waiting on church to start and it and already started you waiting on the sermon to be preached and it's already being preached do me a favor if you buy somebody that ain't said nothing yet can you say get out get get out of get out of my section get, get away from me get away from me get away from me this is a praising section as for me and my role we will praise the Lord look them up and down Tell them you can go sit in the back, but if you go stay up here. You better set this house in order. I said you better set this house in order. I'm still waiting on you. You ain't gonna rush me, I'm waiting on you. No, we gonna give them glory. We gonna give them honor. We gonna give them praise. You can look up here and try to look me up and down and figure it out. You ain't gonna figure it out from there. You got to get to know me. But we gonna give God some praise. I'm looking for my click. I'm looking for my warriors. I'm looking for somebody who's been through something. I'm looking for somebody who come through something. I'm looking for somebody who come over something. I want it to sound like everybody got somebody is in every seat in this room. You don't let nobody come in your house and tear it up. You fight for what's yours. You don't let nobody tell you what you know. When you know, you know that you know that you know that you know. God never fails. You're not going through nothing he can't handle. He will not put more on you than you can bear. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. When you stand on business, you ain't got to be scared. Put your head up. Stick your chest out. Somebody say, I'm on a mission. <laughs> what you're dealing with is a distraction.
bring me my iPad. We about to preach. Bring me, bring me, bring me my, bring, bring me this iPad. We, we about to work this thing out. I don't know what song y'all have. Save it for next week. All right. I love y'all. Good. Just save it for next week. You was hoarse anyway. You needed your voice. Hold somebody's hand. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh upon me. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh upon me. Eternal Spirit, as we get ready to give tonight and we release these seeds, multiply them in such a way that our enemies will be sorry that they spoke about your child. We come up against spiritual warfare, wickedness in high places, curses, soothsayers, witches, warlocks, the enemies of God's progress. We come up against them right now and we stand on the solid rock of the word of God. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. Multiply our gifts. Leave nothing out of our grasp. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you got your gift, pass it to my right, your left. If you're giving online, somebody shout out, gave online. To all of our friends online, God bless you. We thank you so much. Stay standing, y'all. We, we had a party. Where are you going? We stand up. Just act like it ain't no chair there. Pass your gifts to my right, your left. Uh, if you're on my side, just pass it to the dude with the basket. If you're online, you've already pressed send. Next week, I should be able to announce to you um, where we're going to be on a semi-permanent basis until um, we get things straight. By the way, um, I'm going to be transparent with you through this process. We, we haven't even had an insurance adjuster to come to the church yet. Uh, first of all, first of all, they're still arguing about what caused the damage. That's, see, insurance company's job is to take the money and then argue with you when it's time to pay. We know what caused it. It wasn't nothing but one thing that happened that day. <laughs> it, it wasn't 12 disasters in Houston on, on that day. We know what happened, but we're, we're, we're in that process. And then they came back and then they said, well, it's going to take us about another four weeks. So they're playing games with us. But y'all better know, any, any, if y'all you, don't know me, there's two things that I know how to do. Number one, I know how not to quit. And number two, I can throw them hands. I, I promise you. In the spirit, in any other way. I can, I can do it. I promise you. And I, I can't beat everybody. I promise you. I'm not saying, I'm not that dude that so I can beat everybody. But anybody fight me, they gonna know they was in one. Now, you gonna be like, they gonna see you. They might have won. They gonna be like, but dang, dog, who was, who was he? Because <laughs> I'll do anything. I'll bite you, cut you, whatever it takes. <laughs> I'll stab you with a spoon if I need to. <laughs> but we're in a fight. And, and this church has never been in a fight that we didn't win. Well, let me give you the victories. We finally got the Dream Center open. So the Dream Center is open. Because of your faithfulness and giving, we were able to do that. Again, we ain't got no insurance money, so we're doing this. Cash. Uh, we got the Dream Center open. Um, uh, what's, the, what's the holiday that's coming? Is it Memorial Day or Labor Day? Which one coming? Labor Day. Uh, we'll have our daycare open by, by Labor Day. We'll be open. Um, we won't be able to have them in the building because it's still uninhabitable, but we're renting spaces. We're actually, when you come up there next time, you'll see we're going to be uh, trailers and everything all in the grass because they, they won't let us in the building, but it's still our land. <laughs> so we're going to use everything we can. It's going to be cubicles and buildings all outside because we're going to do what we got to do. And so uh, we're going to get, we're going to get there and I'll be able to have an answer for you next week about where we're going to be. There's a good 
possibility that we will be in the same place until our building is finished. So we won't have to move around. And God is blessing us uh, to be able to do that. We called one company to find out what it would cost to rent the LED screens and all that kind of stuff. So when you come to church, you can have LED screens. Can I tell you, the owner of the company said, Pastor, I'm with you. We will give you the LED stuff for free. Just pay the workers. You can't tell me God ain't with us. He said, we will, for the entirety of the contract, we won't charge you a dime for the equipment. Just make sure the workers can eat. And we're going to do that. Amen. The place that we talked to, we asked them about the rent. Do you know, I promise you, that this place that we may have, the rent should be pretty high. I promise you some of you all are paying more rent than we will be paying on a commercial building. I'm just, I'm just telling you, it's working out in our favor. And that's why you got to wait on the Lord. And they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. Walk and not be weary, run and not faint. And so God is working it out. He's working it out. And just pray for your church because it's hard to have all of your bills and your new bills. Because anybody knows you got to pay the mortgage even when you can't get in the building. But you also have to pay the rent where you are. And so we're paying everything as if we're there and also paying everything because we're not there. That's what makes this journey difficult. That's why we got to be faithful in our giving. But God is going to bring us out. I said he is going to bring us out. And I want to thank you for trusting me as your leader. I will make you proud when this is all said and done. Hallelujah. Bless you. Y'all got time for a word? Is that what you came here for tonight? Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 6. I promise you one thing. You don't know what? Don't even worry about this lavalier. I'm just going to use this handheld the whole time. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 6, verse number 1. The Bible says, Now it came to pass when Sambalad and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall, and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in uh, some one of the villages in the plain of Ono, but they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messages unto them, saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down and argue with you. Why should the work cease? Why should I leave it and come down to you? See, every once in a while, see, they'll try to draw you in an argument. And, and you got to look at them and say, I'm up here. Why should I come down there and argue with Just touch your name and say, I'm up here. I'm up here. I don't... I don't argue down, I argue up. I want you to change the directions of your word. Anytime you send your word down, you're wasting your time. Always send your words up. Even when you got a complaint with a business, never argue with anybody. See, don't take a no from somebody who can't give you a yes. Okay. Are you with me so far? So they're having this argument. He says, I, I'm going to stay and do my work. This is what the Lord told me to preach. How many of you all are in a situation right now where where you were classified, the position you're in right now to be painful, be honest. You're in some sort of painful position, whether it is with a relative or with a dream or a vision, some sort of pressure. Let me use it, that, that word you use, some sort of position that, is, that, that has pressure in it. Raise your hand. I want to see if I'm talking to the right crowd. Online, raise your virtual hand if you are in a position where you feel this pain and this pressure. The Lord told me to tell you he's getting ready to move you from pain to permission. I don't know who this word is for, but the thing that you thought was too hard, God says in this next season, I'm about to give you permission, watch this, to do even the things that you doubt about yourself. 
My goal today is to erase all of the doubt out of your head and know that come hell or high water, you're going to accomplish exactly what God has put in your spirit to accomplish. If you believe it, say, I believe it. Amen. Give your neighbor a high five before you sit down and tell them you're moving from pain to permission. So often in life, often in life, you will find yourself placed in painful positions you didn't even ask for. Ra raise your hand if, if you ever w gone through something and then you just looked up and said, why me and why now? And let's just, let's just have a conversation. Not only why me, why now, but you start asking yourself questions like this, like, what did I do? What, what, did, I, what, what did I do? Why? Why me? I, and, and, and if you petty, you're like, because I know some people. <laughs> oh, don't act like you don't ever volunteer people for trouble to get yourself out of it. I know some people who deserve this, but I ain't. Nobody, nobody's born expecting to have cancer. No mother ever gives birth to a child to have to bury them. No, nobody ever gets in their car and drives to get hit by a drunk driver. But you, you, just, you just sometimes end up going through things that are a part of the plan and you don't even know why and where it came from. You, you ate healthy and you still got sick. You treated people right, and you still got misused. Have you ever given somebody everything you had, and when you needed just a little bit in return? <laughs> they act like it was a bother for them to even be there for you. Somehow they forgot that if it wasn't for you, holler at your boy if I'm talking to you. It's, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's a difficult position in life, and this is not just those of us who live in 2024. This happens throughout historicity. This happens in the Bible. Job did not ask for all 10 of his children to be killed. He did not ask for all of his cattle to be killed. He did not ask to go from being the richest man in the East to having nothing. But without that, he never gets to get double for his trouble. So sometimes the cost of gain is loss. So when you, when you ask God for more, you have to understand, as I told you last week, that you cannot be filled for the second time until you've been emptied for the first time. Now, Paul never asked to be walking up a road to Damascus because he was going to kill Christians and all of a sudden be blinded and thrown down and and, and, and be usurped by the Lord, and, and the Lord starts speaking to him and says, Paul, I know what your plans are, but I have a different design for your life. And see, this is what you have to understand, is that what you're going through right now is, is, is the design of your life. So your life has been designed by God. His ways are not your ways. Your thoughts and his thoughts are not in alignment. So, so God has a plan that's above anything you could ever ask or think. And he knows that you've got to be vexed and you've got to cry and you've got to go through pain and you have to be picked on and you have to be prodded. But, but he also knows this, that weeping only endures for a night. Joy comes in the morning. And, and I do know for sure that when you come out of this fire, you're, you're going to come out as pure gold. You're, you're going to come out like the Hebrew boys, not even smelling like smoke. In fact, do me a favor, tell your neighbor, I do not look like what I've been through. If you, if you had known what I've been through, you probably would move. <laughs> you, you would move away from me because anybody who has been through what I've been through is liable to just pop at any moment. But somehow the peace of God, talk to me somebody, the peace of God that surpasseth all understanding. Oh, you, 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 you don't know. Job didn't know. Isaac had no idea that when his father was taking him up that mountain that he was supposed to be the sacrifice. He had no idea. He had no idea. Because if he had known, he would not have gone. 
So I could just stop right there and preach. See, if God would have told you the pain you were going to have to endure, you would have set that one out. You would have said, God, I'm going to stay home. That I'm not, I'm not going to go through that. If he had told you ahead of time how many times you were going to have to cry, you would have stayed at home. If he had told you how much depression and stress and frustration, and watch this, and, and, and if he put you in a position to win, he, he didn't tell you, I'm going to let them say everything about you, but I'm not going to let you say anything about them. Anybody got that thing like, well, you just got to get even. It's in your spirit. Like, come on now. I'm just trying to, I know some of y'all say, but anybody got that thing? If you mess with me, it's a must. Did I mess with you? But God says, no, I have something bigger for you. And if your reactions are on the same level as the people who offend you, then what makes you better than the people who afflicted you. There has to be a difference between you and them. Otherwise, I can give you what they have. But I've got, a, I've got something higher for you. I've got something higher for you. If you read the Bible, you see this over and over and over. Um, uh, Esther did not ask to be the concubine uh, of the king, but she was forced to do it. And sometimes you look up in your life and you're like, how did I end up here? Have you ever asked the question, how did I end up here? How did I end up with an education and no job? How did I end up single after 25 years of marriage? How did I end up with, with no career after all of the education I have? How did I end up not with the friends I started this journey with. How did I end up in this position? What in the world did I do? What happened? And, and, and is the devil right? Because he'll try to trick you that this is a result of something you've done. But let me tell you something. God don't have to sneak an attack in. God ain't petty like that. When he wants to afflict you, he can afflict you. And he can tell you it was him. God's not petty. When God does a thing, he does a thing and he puts his name on it. Are you talking to me today? So I want you to know that you're not alone. You're sitting next to somebody that when they look at their life and they look at the plan for their life and they look at what they hoped for and what everybody told them and what they dreamed about and what they believed, they too don't recognize their current location. They thought they'd be making way more money than this by now. They thought, they thought that they would be done renting by now. Come on, talk to me. They did not know that 12 years later they were going to be still paying for the same car. They did not know it. They thought it was going to be three years. They thought it was going to be five years. They had no idea that their heart would still be broken over a person they haven't seen in years. It rains on the just. <laughs> and it rains on the unjust. And I want to talk to people who are finally finding out you've been picked for pain. You were chosen for this. Read John chapter 9. The Bible says there was a man who was blind since birth. And then the people around him said, is this man blind? Because they believed that a person was blind because of their parents' sin. So the question was asked, is this man blind because of his parents' sin or his sin? And the answer says, no, he is simply blind for the sake of the gospel. Some of you all have been chosen by God to struggle for him. I'm going to get to the exciting part. I'm just, trying to find, I'm just trying to find the people who understand what I'm talking about. I'm looking for, have you been through anything lately? You've been through anything lately. You've been through anything lately. And, and this is what happened. The story of Nehemiah is one of placement. He was placed in this position. He was placed in this trouble. And Nehemiah chapter 2 says that one day God woke Nehemiah up in the middle of the night and told him, go to Jerusalem. And the time that God sent him to go to Jerusalem was a time that Jerusalem had just come out of captivity and the people had a lot of trauma because they were not only slaves, but they were des the descendants of slaves. So, 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 so now they are, they are in trauma. Watch this. They don't trust anybody. They don't trust anybody. Why? Because when you've been through something, you think other people will take you through something. Okay? Anybody ever left a relationship and walked into one wounded? 
looking at a person you don't know through the lens of the person you did know. Because when you, are, when you have trauma in you, you can step out of the circumstance, but you take the trauma into the next season. And so now Nehemiah, who is a new leader thinking that everybody's ready to go, has to deal with people who are physically where they are, but mentally where they were. And he comes up and he says, I have a vision for you, and I want you to be excited, and we've got some stuff to do. But, but they're looking at Nehemiah and saying, but yeah, that's what our slave masters told us. That's how they got us here. They tricked us. They made us to believe that things were going to be better and things were not. And now we're here. We don't trust you. We are mentally disturbed. We are physically tired. And Nehemiah asks a question before he goes to get them. He says, how are the people in Jerusalem doing after the slavery? And the question to the answer is the truth. It said, they're not doing good. I just want to know. Will anybody be honest and say, I'm not doing good? Oh, man, we always walking around. How you doing? I'm straight. <laughs> How you feel? Oh, man, I'm good, never better. But the truth is, it's inside. You're not good. Could you just tell your neighbor and say, I look good, but I'm not doing good? <laughs> Don't miss the first part. I look good. But, but I'm, not, I'm not doing good. I don't know who to trust. I don't know where to go. I don't know who likes me. I don't know, I don't know who I like. I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I want to go to work tomorrow, if I want to call in well. Well, I ain't coming in no more. I don't know, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know if I want to drop these kids off at their daddy house and never turn around. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know if I just want to move out of the country and never turn back around. I don't know what I want to do. I'm frustrated. I'm mad. I'm frustrated. I'm happy and I'm sad at the same time. I'm smiling, but the tears are coming down my eyes because I don't know. I'm happy because God said be happy, but the truth is I'm so mad that I want to fight somebody. I don't know if the, ne the next person that cuts me off in traffic, I actually want to hit them and hope my car don't dent. I just want... Just you and me, ma'am. It's just you and me. Everybody else in here got it all together, but just me and this lady with your hope. That's the biggest Bible I've ever seen in church in my life. I want to know you got the word hidden in your heart. Uh, anybody else in here like me and her? Acting like your relationship is good. It ain't. Just because you hold a hand on Instagram don't mean you hold hands in the kitchen. <laughs> Talking about relationship goals. Not. I know your baby cute. They got baby hair, but they better than a rattlesnake. <laughs> Talking about look at, look at little Shantae. She bad. She be biting people at school. She about to get put out of preschool. We ain't even been in school that long. They were, dis they were discouraged. They were disappointed. They were distressed. And the truth is, is you can be saved and be disappointed. You can love God and have difficulty. In this life, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have tribulations. You're going to feel bad sometime. Have you ever felt like that? Like, I love God, but I can't get over this depression. I, I love God, but I can't get this feeling of fatigue out of me. I love God, but I feel like quitting. I, I know what the words say, but I can't, I can't even say it right now. I don't feel like praying. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like talking. But, but, but I want you to hold on before you give up. Because you have been through difficult times before. And God has brought you out. And let me tell you, if he did it before, whoo, don't y'all make me preach. If he did it before, he can do it again. Matter of fact, encourage three people and say, you are in your season for God to do it again. If they didn't say nothing, you got the wrong neighbor. You're in a season where you're going to have to manage your rage. See, Pastor Osteen, we have, we have these people in our church, they just pretend like they're so saved. But I'm, I'm just, you, you're going to have to manage your anger. Because, see, here's the problem. If you don't learn to manage it, some going to hit you at the wrong time. And, and, and then all of a sudden, somebody going to be hit. 
you, 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 you have to, it's, it's, it's imperative that you build yourself up in your holy faith now because the world is never going to not be mean. Your family is never not going to want to use you. Relationships are not ever going to not break up. So you have to decide in your heart right now, come hell or high water, I will trust in the Lord until I die. Some trust in chariots. Oh, y'all, don't make, I'm trying, I'm trying. Jerusalem, Jerusalem's walls were down and the gates were burned. They were a city without walls. And let me tell you, a city without a wall was an embarrassment. Not only was it an embarrassment, it was dangerous because people could walk in and out. And then the Lord gave me an epiphany. He gave me a revelation that some of us are stressed out because we have life with no boundaries. You have a life with no walls. People can walk in your life and walk out of your life. They can walk in how they want to and they can walk out how they want to. But I want to preach to people and say, you know what? I know 2024 is almost over, but before this year is over, I'm going to build some boundaries. You're not just going to talk to me any kind of way. You're not just going to do me any kind of way. You're not going to walk in and out of my life with no accountability. I'm looking for people who say I am building boundaries in this season of my life. You got to have boundaries. Listen to me. Am I preaching to anybody? You get to decide what you let in your spirit. I'm going to walk through this because I can see some of y'all around. You got to make sure that you don't let anybody in your spirit. When I was growing up, uh, my mama had a rule. If you was outside playing, them shoes came off at the door. You couldn't just walk through her house and Lord knows you couldn't put your feet on her couch. Oh, y'all not talking to me today. Just, you couldn't go to sleep without washing the dishes. Oh, y'all ain't, oh, y'all, y'all, y'all didn't get raised. You didn't get raised. Okay, I got you. Uh, be, on the weekend, if we wanted to go play with our friends, we had to clean up the house. Anybody ever had to clean? We didn't have no Fabulosa. We had Comet and Ajax. Y'all remember that? And, and it would leave a streak on the chrome, so you had to wring the towel out real good so that it wasn't streaking. And my mama would come in the bathroom to make sure. She inspected it. Why? She had boundaries. And now I do the same thing in my house. Because those boundaries become rules. Talk to me, somebody. They become rules that you can pass down. So listen to me, mama. You got to show your daughter that you can't let people. Come here, daddy. You got to show your son that you respect a woman no matter what. Why? Because you got to have boundaries. Boundaries become rules that are passed down. There was a city with no walls. A city with no boundaries and the state of the city affected Nehemiah to his core so much that the Bible says that he fasted for days. Fasted for days. Uh, how many of y'all got a fasting spirit? Like, Lord, I'm going to fast from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Lord, take this fast. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all know y'all be negotiating with God. Talking about, God, I'm going to fast all day. You just eating. People talking about you still fasting? Mm-hmm. You done ate a whole snicker. You know you ain't been fasting. And it ain't a fast because you didn't eat as much as you used to eat. Fasted for days. Some things only come by fasting and praying. What is fasting? Fasting is doing without an essential to show God that I'm going to do without comfort so you can give me an answer. Oh, God, help me in this place today. He fasted for days, and the Bible says nine times he prayed. See, this is another thing, because we pray once, and if God don't answer it, we say, okay, well, God must don't want to be involved in this one, so I'm going to handle this one. He prayed nine times. So don't you think that God is upset with you because you have to ask him more than once. He prayed nine times, and his longest and my most favorite prayer is in Nehemiah chapter 1. And, and, and I want to read it to you. It's, this, it's, it's an amazing prayer. You should go read it. He says, he says, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant. If you just read that, you miss it. Now let's go back. He says, oh Lord, please 
let your ear be attentive to your servant. I looked up the word, O Lord, and then I got excited because the word, O Lord, refers to the name Yahweh. This is, this is for any Bible readers, you're about to get excited in here. This is Yahweh. And so they believe, the reason why he said, O Lord, is because they believe that Yahweh, being the name of God, which is a, which is a, a tetragrammaton, it, 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 it literally does not have any vowels in the Hebrew, so we added vowels in the English. But well, watch this. He says, he says, O Lord, he doesn't say Yahweh because they believe that the name of the Lord, Yahweh, was too sacred to say. So in English, we say Lord. In Hebrew, we say Adonai. So, so you got to understand that he, he was saying, Lord, you're so holy. I want to call upon you, but I ain't going to call you. I, I can't say your name, so I got I to gotta say something. Uh, and, 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 and I want to get your attention, but I want to do it humbly before your presence. This is the same Lord that refers to what Moses said in Exodus chapter 3. When Moses says, Lord, what is your name? He told him, I am. Oh, y'all, I ain't got no Bible readers in here today. You won't hear God called Yahweh in the Bible. You will hear him called Adonai. You will hear him in the Greek, Kyrios, in the Latin, Dominos. But, but we won't call him Yahweh. He refers to him as Lord. Watch this. And Nehemiah didn't just know that God was great. He knew God. You miss what I just said. You miss what I just said. I'm about to preach in here. He didn't know that. He didn't just know that God was great. He knew God. Watch this. Because you can know that God is something and still not know him. Anybody want me to prove it? I know Bill Gates is rich, but I don't know Bill Gates. And that's the problem with this world. We got a lot of people that know God is holy. We got a lot of people that know God is righteous, but they don't. Don't listen to people who know what God is. Listen to somebody who knows God. Y'all, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm missing it. I'm missing it. Don't marry somebody who tells you what God is. Marry somebody that tells you they know God for themselves. I want to poll the house. Is there anybody in here that just knows God? I, I, not that he's rich in houses and land. Not that he can bless you, not that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We know all of that stuff. You can know all of that about God and not know him. I'm saying, do you know him for your self? Touch your name and say, I know him. I know him. I know him. Don't sit down because I'm about to help you. Everybody who's standing up, stay standing up. Everybody sit down. Don't stand up now because this ain't for you. This is only for the people who are standing up. Watch this. Nehemiah's job. Ooh, I'm about to preach to myself. Nehemiah's job before he ever rebuilt the wall was a cupbearer. Anybody know what a cupbearer is? A cupbearer is a person who drinks the wine before the king to make sure that he's not being poisoned by somebody who's upset with him. So Nehemiah literally volunteered every day to drink poison for his leader. He basically said, King, you don't got to worry about this. I handle it. Because he knew that if the king had to be worried about the drink, he couldn't worry about the kingdom. So he says, I'll drink the poison. Watch this. Before he had ever been given permission to rebuild the wall, he drunk the poison for the king. Okay, I got to say it again. They say, they say, uh, you, you got to, okay, rewind, press play. Before God ever gave him permission to build the wall, he drunk the poison for the king. All right, they say the, three, the third time's a charm, Pastor. Before God ever trusted him with the permission to rebuild the wall, he trusted him with the poison. And here is what the Lord told me. Before he can trust you with a plan, he has to know he can trust you with poison. Will you still praise me when they're trying to kill you? Will you still give me glory when they are lying on you? Will you stay humble when they make up stuff about you? I can't trust you with a plan if I can't trust you with the poison. Will you go to work tomorrow knowing the person who don't like you and not try to get him fired. 
That's why God blessed Paul. When Paul was building the fire for the men, he stuck his hand in the wood and a snake bit him and Paul did not die because God could trust him with poison. When God can trust you with poison, he can trust you with a plan. When he can trust you with hurt, he will give you help. When he can trust you with down, he can trust you with up. When he can trust you with heartbreak, he can trust you with heart fix. Is there anybody in here that can say like David, it was good that I was afflicted so that I could learn the statues of God? Here's the question I'm really trying to ask you. Can you praise him in spite of how you feel? Can you give him glory in spite of what you feel on the inside? I need about 600 people to open up your mouth in this place and say, God, you can trust me with the poison. If God can't trust you where you are, how can he trust you where you're going? He could trust him with the poison. So now he says, all right, now that I can trust you with this poison, let, let, me, let me give you this permission. Are y'all, are y'all still with me? He says, let me give you this, this permission. The Bible says, that, now watch this, don't, don't, don't miss this. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 7, it says, drink your wine with a joyful heart. So extra biblically, you have to understand that in the Bible, joy and wine are synonyms. Okay? All right? So, so I'm about to show you what, what I mean by this poison in the wine. Wine is joy. Joy is wine. You remember in John chapter 2 when, when they ran out of wine? If you go back and read John chapter 2. They was happy until the wine ran out. See, see the wine went and the joy left. Y'all... y'all and, 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 and so, so wine and joy are synonyms. Where, where was the poison put in the wine? See, see, the enemy is really just trying to poison your joy. He, he wants you walking around despondent and distracted. But mama said this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. And since the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Look at your neighbor and say, if you don't say man, I'm still going to say it. If you don't shout, I'm still going to shout because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul shouts hallelujah. I need about 200 people to lose their mind and give God glory, not because of stuff, but because you got joy. Whatever you do, don't lose your joy. Lose your house, but don't lose your joy. Lose your job, but don't lose your joy. Lose a relationship, but don't lose your joy. You've got to have joy, unspeakable joy. And there's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness says, I'm happy because my rent is paid. Happiness says, I'm excited because I've got a savings account. I'm, I'm happy because I went to the doctor and, 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 the, and the scan came back negative. I'm so happy. Joy says, oh, they said they saw a lump but they must have made a mistake because by his stripes I am healed I'm trying to find the people in the room who got joy that if you lose the house you're still going to worship if you lose the apartment you're still going to give them glory if they tell you you're sick you you, you understand that, that God gives and he takes away I'm trying to find the people I want the people who have joy to release a sound in this place can I hear the sound of joy Let me tell you why you got to keep your joy. And I don't know how this happened because I did not do this on purpose. But it was four months from the time that the wall fell down 
to Nehemiah having his next meeting with the king. See, if you wasn't at church last week, you just like, what's going on? What, what, they, what, they, what they talking about? See, that's why you got to come to church every week. Because I told you God's about to do something in four months. I don't know who I'm talking to, but in four months, you're going to have a face-to-face -face meeting with a decision maker. In four months, you're going to have a face-to-face -face meeting with somebody who can change your life. Slap your neighbor just like you did last week and tell them four months. Four months, I promise you. In four months. Oh, I feel something stirring up in here. Somebody believe it. Do me a favor. High five four people. Four months. Four months. Four months. Four months. Throw it up like a gang sign. Four. 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 Four months. Four months. Four months. Four months. You about to see four, four, four on the clock. You about to see it on the clock every time you look up. It's going to be a sign from God that everything's about to turn around. Shout four months. Four months from now, you're going to look in your bank account on Friday and you're going to see more than you ever. What happened? God snuck a raise in. Four months. I ain't playing this. I didn't, even, I didn't even see that. It was four months. God will establish the thing, won't he? It was four months. From the time the walls fell down to the time he had an opportunity to talk with the king. See, you got to get through your wall season before you get to your king opportunity. And if you quit in three months and 20 days, if you give up in three months and 29 days, don't come back here talking about it didn't come true. That ain't four months. Touch your name and say, you got to run through the finish line. I didn't mean to say that, but four months. I'm telling you. Anybody birthday in November? You're going to have a good birthday. Four months. It was in the month of Nisan. And Nehemiah was in the presence of the king. Watch this, though. He showed up to the king in bad spirits. See, don't let them rascals have you showing up to your next level meeting with a bad attitude. The Bible says he showed up in bad spirits. Now, this is a problem because it was illegal to be in the presence of a Persian king with a bad attitude. They will kill you if your vibe messed up their vibe. Touch on them and say, don't kill my vibe, bro. Like, dog, oh, for real, bro. I ain't come here to be sad. You up here looking all ashy and dry. I came here to be happy. Don't, don't mess up my vibe, bro. Look at, look at some, some of y'all neighbors just, I don't know why people come to church to look mean. The joy of the Lord. He came in the presence of the king with a bad spirit. King said, boy, don't you know what I could do to you? Your job is to make me happy. Don't, don't, don't come in my presence with a bad attitude. But because Nehemiah had a good reputation with him, the king said, now, this is unusual. The king said, Nehemiah, how can I help you? Did you hear what I just said? Normally... They will kill somebody for coming in their presence with a bad attitude. But because he normally had a good one, he knew something had to be off. So he says, how can I help you? In a stroke of genius, so I love the word of God. In a stroke of genius, Nehemiah does something that if you are not paying attention, it will miss you. Nehemiah says, king, I'm asking for your permission to return to the land of my father's tomb. And the king said, yes. Now, don't miss this. Don't miss this. Because the king had already decreed, if I see anybody rebuilding Jerusalem, I'm going to kill them. So Nehemiah doesn't say, can I go rebuild Jerusalem? He says, can I go repair? 
the land of my father's tomb. Why? Because Persians were afraid of disrespecting the dead. So he knew how to talk to the king. Jesus Christ. See, some of y'all can't get out of God what you need. You don't know how to talk to him. All you got to do is say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. Lord, if you don't do something about this, ain't nothing going to happen. You don't have to go to God with a plan. You got to go broken. You got to go. Watch this. He says, can I return to the land? Ooh, I'm about to say something that's going to knock somebody out. He says, can I return to the land of my father's tomb? The king says, go. Where is Nehemiah's daddy buried? Jerusalem. What did I tell you in the beginning of the sermon? The Lord woke him up in the middle of the night and put Jerusalem on his heart. So, so, so the king says, if anybody rebuilds Jerusalem, I'm going to kill him. God says, Nehemiah, rebuild Jerusalem. Well, what's the consequences of rebuilding Jerusalem? And you're the cupbearer to the king that says, if you rebuild, <laughs> if you rebuild Jerusalem, I'm going to kill you. What's the consequences? Oh, so you mean sometimes your vision can get you killed? You mean sometimes your vision can get you crucified? But God had another plan. The king says, nobody rebuild Jerusalem. Nehemiah, in the stroke of genius, says, a king, um, is it all right with you if I go rebuild the place where my daddy buried diplomacy see see this goes to the people who think you can say what you want whenever you want however you want God told me to tell you that how you speak in pain will determine if he gives you permission preach Keon I, I don't even think nobody here but me I'm gonna pat my own self on the back that was dope you ain't got to say nothing God says how you speak in pain will determine if I give you permission to go rebuild your next level let me ask you a question how many of you all are guilty of talking crazy when you hurt? Raise your hand. What's your hand doing down? Y'all raise your hand in the back too. I can't see you, but I don't see enough hands. When you, when you in pain, talk to me. You, you are liable to say. How many of you know your tongue sharper than a two-edged sword? If, if somebody say something to you in pain, you going to tell them where to go? how to get there, and you're going to write them a prescription for the sickness they're going to get when they arrive. How you speak when you're in pain determines how high God will lift you. I don't have to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you have ever watched this man of God preach on a Sunday with all of the vitriol and negativity and hatred that they throw at the leader of this church, you have never, ever heard him say anything other than you can do it. You've never heard him say anything other than there is hope for you. Why? Because he understands that how you speak in pain determines, see this building ain't big like this just because God gave it to him. God gave it to him is because he knew how he could trust him in pain. And when God can trust you with big pain, he can trust you with big promotion. If he can't trust you with pain, you will always stay small. If you're asking God to grow it, before you ask God to grow it, ask him to grow you. God, give me the strength to walk in my sister's house and not cuss her out because she didn't speak to me the last time we saw each other. One lady over there said, oh, Jesus, how he know my business? How many of y'all still mad at somebody? And every time you speak about them to somebody else, you tearing their name up. Ooh, preach Keon Henderson. Every time you say, who, oh, Earl? Don't, tell, don't say nothing to me about Earl, because I'm going to tell you.
How you act in pain determines the permission you get. You can't act ugly because they're ugly. Wise man said, never argue with a fool. Because people from a distance can't tell who is who. Bars. Y'all heard that? I put that on the album. Jay-Z told me to say that. King said, what's wrong with you, man? He said, I need to rebuild the place of my father's tomb. Okay? You can go. Look at the diplomacy. He didn't let his anger make him say something that would have got him denied. See, this is something we all have to fight. And, and just to be quite transparent with you, when you've been raised like some of us, anger is easy. Come on, y'all. No, no. Like, my default mechanism is to go off. Anybody like me? Like, I can go off and not be sorry. No, no. I didn't say what I, what I end up at. Like, I want to go off immediately. Anybody? Like, who you talk? Oh, you were saying hi. I'm sorry. I, my bad. I, you just looked like you was finna say something. But, but how you speak in pain determines the permission that God will give you. I speak this into your life. If you learn to manage your anger and your rage and your aggression, the Lord told me to tell you to get ready for accelerated assignments. If you can walk in work tomorrow and treat the boss right that treats you wrong, accelerated assignments. If you get to the place that just because they didn't speak to you don't mean you don't speak to them. Am I preaching? Am I preaching? I'm just looking for somebody who said, just help me. I mean, you, when you get to the place where you don't repay evil for evil, And that you don't expose because they exposed. Accelerated assignments. You are getting ready to accomplish things in a quicker pace than you ever have in your life. And you're going to be able to trace it to one thing. I speak well when I'm not doing well. Manage that rage that your father passed down to you. I'm not ready yet. Manage that rage that your mother passed down to you. You know they told you stories about your grandmama? How she carried that blade everywhere she went? How many of y'all had a grandmama? She was 92, still carrying the gun. <laughs> How you speak when you're in pain will determine the promotions and the permission you get. Now watch this. This is going, and, and, and the devil don't stop because once he got there, he ran into two haters named Sam Ballad and Tobiah. Because every time you got an assignment, there's an assassin. Every assignment, there's an assassin. So if you got four assignments, you got four people shooting at you. You're so gifted that everywhere you go, you're always going to have an enemy. It ain't your fault you was born cute, but they hate you. Just touch them and say, it ain't my fault I look like this. No, I mean, I was born fine. Just tell them. Dude. Thank my mama. I don't know. You know you think you look good. Look at you. Looking as good as you want to look. So when we get to Jerusalem, he's confronted by these two haters, and they say, um, anybody who try to help him, we're going to kill them too. Because they always, if they can't kill you, they kill your help. He says, I, I, I'm telling you right now, listen to me. The Bible says Nehemiah gets there and he's got his donkey. But you know, in the King James Version, they use another word for donkey. I'm not going to say it. 
because we're in Lakewood. If I was at the Lighthouse Church, Pastor Oster, I would have said it with no problem. We, we hood like that over there. We just, we just be saying stuff, but I'm going to respect this house. You notice I've been wearing a suit every week. I ain't been eyeing up here no jail. I've been respecting Pastor Osteen's church. But you better believe in September, I'm coming out these suits. And had I known he was going to show up in jeans today, I would have been like, that's how I wanted to dress. I'm going to say it. You use your imagination. The Bible says that there was a pile of rubble. And Nehemiah came to the pile of rubble with his donkey. And the Bible says that he could not get his donkey over it. Your problem is you can't get. For the people who dropped out of school, listen to me. Every once in a while, you're going to get to something that's hard to get your donkey over. I want to say it, I want to say it. Oh. Too many haters in the world, I want to say it though. Oh, I want to say it. I ain't going to do it, I ain't going to do it, I ain't going to do it. Every once in a while, you're going to get to something that's hard to get over. Well, what you going to do? Because you got two options. Either you can get to something that's hard to get over, and you can turn around and say, well, it was too hard. Or you can do what Nehemiah did and rebuild it. Touch three people and say, I'm going to rebuild it. I'm going to rebuild it. I want to rebuild it. I'm going to rebuild it. Watch this. I got to give you this whole sermon. Y'all are groups. Y'all group one, say one. Y'all group two, say group two. Y'all in the back, you group three, say group three. Only got seven groups. I ain't going to let y'all build nothing saying three. Right here in this center section, group four, say four. four. Y'all group five. five. Y'all group six. six. Y'all group seven. Five. Seven, y'all gonna make me come preach the rest of this sermon up there, seven. I've been looking for y'all all day. Where y'all been? So... So Nehemiah put seven groups together. They over there talking about, oh, seven, seven. Boy, the hood going to come out of us no matter where we at. He has seven groups of people to help him rebuild the wall. Now, he got all seven groups to trust and believe that it was time to rebuild, the, I mean, the wall. And the Bible says that when it was time to rebuild the wall, immediately when he asked, they put their hands to it. They didn't question it, probably because they didn't have Instagram, because they had Instagram, they probably wouldn't have. But the man of God says something, and the people who trusted him immediately put their hands to it. Group one did it. Group two did it, group three did it, group four did it, group five did it, group six did it, group seven did it. Now watch this. But it's too easy to end like that. Because the moment all of the groups start working, Sam Ballard and Tobias start saying, y'all going to trust Nehemiah? Huh, group one, you, you really believe that what Nehemiah said to group two? Y'all, Nehemiah lying to y'all. Group three, I know you don't believe that. Group four, group five, group six. 
Starts talking. Group seven. I, I know you don't believe. You, no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't believe it. Oh. Watch this. They said, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to stop them from building with force. This is the Bible. And so they got an army together to try to stop the progress. So that's what minions do. They get their armies. And they try to stop the progress. But don't miss what just happened. Because, whoo, I'm about to help somebody. When Nehemiah went before the king to get permission to go rebuild the father's tomb. Because you can't tell people what you're planning on doing. Okay. So they're going to build the tomb. The Bible says that when he was given permission, I know what I'm talking about because I read it. It says that the king's wife was with him. We got to get out this church in five minutes. I have no doubt that when the king heard what Nehemiah said, he was like, nope, I know Nehemiah, daddy. I know where he buried, I ain't giving permission. Why would the Bible say that his wife was there? Because I believe, see, this is what a good woman do. Let him, let him go. Don't hold that little boy back. He's just trying to get his life together. I believe that his wife was the one that convinced the husband to give him permission. Here's what God told me to tell you. There's a seasoned woman that's about to make a decision that's going to change your life. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there is a woman of God that God is about to assign to your life, and she's going to speak one word, and it's going to change everything for you. Matter of fact, if you sit next to a woman who looked like she got the Holy Ghost, give her a high five and say, are you on assignment? Did God sit me next to you? I need every woman to start prophesying to everybody in the room and say, God said, be blessed. God said that you're the head and not the tail. God says you're above and never beneath. God says you're the lender and not the... I need a woman to shout in this room. Every woman shout, I give you permission. Watch this. We got to get out of here before they put us out of here. We, how many, what time is it? Three minutes. All right. Three minute warning. His wife, I believe his wife was like, just let little knee go on and do what he going to do. You know, she gave him a nickname. It's all right, baby. Mama going to take care of it. Knee, go head on. King like, man, why I got to let him do it? You're always trying to tell me what to do. Shut up. Let him go. He goes. He gets there. How did they try to stop groups one through seven? With an army. Because it's hard to fight while you're working. That's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to make a decision. Are you going to keep working or are you going to fight? Because if you fight, you can't work. And if you work, you can't fight. So you got to make a decision. Are you going to rebuild or are you going to defend yourself? So they said, all right, we got a, we got a, 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 a hammer in one hand and we got a sword in another one because you got to learn how to watch fight and pray but they don't have to why because king sent them with his army God said I'm not going to let you go by yourself I'm going to send you with an army how many of y'all got a friend in your life that while you build, they'll fight? I need you to find your neighbor and say, one of us going to have to be the builder. The other one's going to have to be the fighter. Now I'm going to give you about five seconds to decide which one is going to be which. I need all the builders to shout. I need all the fighters to shout. No, 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 we can't all fight. Somebody got to build and somebody got to fight. This is what we're going to do. This half of the room is going to build. And this half of the room is going to fight. And when I shout build, you shout. And when I shout fight, you shout. Are y'all ready? Build. Fight. Build. Fight.
fight, build, fight, fight, build, build, fight, 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 build, build, fight. Let everything that has prayer praise the Lord. Give your neighbor a high five and shout neighbor, come hell or high water, we're gonna do what God said do. All the builders shout, all the fighters shout. Tell somebody God's sending you with an army. You're not gonna have to do this one by yourself. God's about to send you somebody that'll fight while you build. God's about to send somebody to pay the debt off. God's about to send somebody to send you back to college. God's about to send somebody to pay the tuition. God's about to send somebody to sign the deed for you. God's about to send you a co-signer when you go back to college. Trust God for the army. I wish I had time to finish it. We got to go. Do you know how quickly they built this thing? See, they would have never done it if group five and six was absent. One through seven. Everybody said, this is our wall. See, you can't depend on nobody to rebuild your stuff. And you can't expect people to understand why you have to take a leave of absence from their foolishness to finish your vision. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. So, some of y'all gonna have to tell your friends, I, I, can't go to, I, can't, I can't go to Papa Do's this weekend, I got a vision. I, I can't go out of town this month because that money I'm using for my future. I, I, my, my kids are in a funny place right now. I need to be present in their life. See, you can't trust nobody to rebuild your stuff. They put their hands to it. Everybody put your hands in front. Those are the only hands that's going to get this done. You got to block Tobiah and Samballot out. You can't listen to the chatter. It's a distraction. It was ours before it went down. It's going to be ours when it goes back up. We were together before the storm hit. And we're going to be together after this storm is over. The vision has to take priority. Don't let people who don't understand the things of God cloud your vision about what God says. Did you hear what I said? I have never let you down. I have never misled you. I have never been dishonest with you. Even if you didn't understand it was the truth. You can't let people who don't understand facts paint a picture for you. Because the truth is, is if I came down there and I brought you up here and they start talking about you, we might not listen to you either. 
Don't become self-righteous. He who is without sin, he or she should cast the first stone. By the time we finish with the devil, he won't know what hit him. I trust you too. Stand to your feet. Look around. Look at the people who are next to you, behind you. Look around. Those are your family members. They depending on you. Online, you can't see us, but we can see you. And you don't have to be in this building to be a part of this movement. Some of you couldn't make it, but you tuned in. Let me tell you something. God understands effort. Don't make anybody make you believe that there's a different God in church than that's at home. The same Holy Spirit that's in this room is the one that's in your living room. And we love you even though we can't see you. And we believe in you even though, even though we can't see you. And we hope you feel from breast to breast that this is a God thing. We shall not be moved. Come hell or high water, we will stand on the wall. And we will not come off the wall to argue with Sanballat and Tobiah. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit will guard your ear gate, your eye gate. Some of y'all got friends calling you right now telling you, be careful with that church. They telling you, I already, you ain't got to tell me, I know how they go. They come here, they love it, they don't get what they want, they leave and then try to get you to go down with them. But the truth is, look at me, you know who they really are. You know they got messed up ways. Don't start trusting them now. This is a movement of God. And we're going to do it together. If you're in this place today and you've never, ever given your life to Christ, and God sent you to be a part of this movement, there is one thing that I can offer you with consistency, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're in this place today, if you never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and God sent you to join this ministry, last week we had about 70 plus people that said God connected us with this journey. I believe he's going to do it again. All you got to do is come out of your seat wherever you are. I just want to pray for you at this altar and we're going to go home.